Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another spirit, uh, another scripture from the Lord. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for your many blessings. We love you and we praise you. We ask you to help us as we learn and discern your word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. All right, and so this is telling us um, that our enemy is not who we think, right? Our enemy is is it's not... Um, your boss or our enemy is not your your children or your spouse the enemy is satan and these forces of darkness these cosmic powers these spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places right these rulers and authorities and so if these are the actual enemy then we should carry ourselves a little bit differently than aggressiveness in our physical, but more aggressiveness in our spirit, right? And so it says, um, Romans chapter six, verse two, by no means, how can we who died to sin still live in it? All right. And so this is talking about, should we continue and sin that grace may abound, right? Um, of course not. We, um, we are dead to sin, right? It would make no sense to continue in sin if we are dead to sin. So what does this have to do with these rulers and this darkness and wrestling against flesh and blood? Well, if if sin is dead in us and, and we're going about our lives and, and we are um, living our lives as if um, we are still in our old man, our old self, then maybe either the commitment wasn't they actually there or there's something driving you, right? Sometimes you have to recognize when there's something driving you. There's something causing you to stay in that angry state, that bitter state, right? There's something that's causing you to think that thought over and over again when you're trying to be released from it. Um, you have to recognize um, when God has freed you from something and you're still going back to that old place. You have to recognize it. You have to um, take the authority that has been given to you by Christ Jesus and you have to deal with it, right? You have to take authority over it. And if you're having problems with that, you need to address Christ. You need to address Holy Spirit. And you need to boldly come before that throne of grace with confidence come, right? And you need to ask him for help. You need to ask him for what you need in your time of need, right? And so, God has given us a great grace in that he works with us in this, right? He knows that there are spiritual forces that are driving us. He knows that, you know, you're not um, yelling at people or, or going off on people just inadvertently. You are actually trying to do your best. And he knows when when that's your heart, right? And he knows that he's, he's transforming your mind. He's transforming your heart. Um, but he also knows knows when there are spiritual forces of darkness trying to wrestle with you, trying to oppress you, trying to get under your skin through people, right? And 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 live a certain way. This is not just with anger and things, but I'm just speaking of that as the example. And so um, God recognizes that he's a sympathetic high priest. He understands when you're going through things like that. And he knows that, you know, you have need of much grace, right? We're all in need of grace. And so if if that's, and we're all struggling with that old man, then we need to prioritize um, allowing Holy Spirit to come in, being honest with the Lord about 
everything. I mean, raw and brutally honest. Like, I don't know how to get through this. I don't know how, where to start, Lord. And God, God can help you when you're like that, right? When you're honest about it, when you admit you're wrong and you, you pray and you fight against those forces, you take that authority and you still come to him in that rawness. Lord, I still don't know what to do. I need your help. I need you to show me my way through this. And so, um, uh, here, the the third verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter 3, verse 13. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. So it is God who has glorified Christ Jesus. And why did he do that? Um, he did it so that we could be children of God. He did it so that we could um, um, stop in this nature and, and, and take authority over it, right? He, he's, he is the one who is pouring out this great grace, right? It is the one, it is the Christ who is doing this and here the people are confronted with themselves right they are are being confronted with what they've done they're being confronted with their guilt right and so um here you know they're gonna have to just like we always talk about with other scriptures they're gonna have to make a choice right at this point they can accept that guilt of what they did be proud of it and walk away and act as if they weren't guilty of anything they they just were doing God's will right and they know that they're wrong but those spiritual forces allowing those spiritual forces to continue to drive them to continue to um convince them and tell them that Christ was not the anointed one and and deny what you just saw the miracle that that you saw this crippled man being healed at the gate called beautiful, right? They, they had a choice at this point. They could accept that guilt and say, you know what? I was doing the right thing. And I know I was, you know, like in just being complete denial or they could choose Christ at this point right? They could choose Christ. They could reject the old man, reject the sin nature, reject um, all these forces of darkness that are driving them and die to self, die, uh, allow that guilt to, to, to be laid at their feet and say, hey, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for what I've done, Lord. I'm wrong. I need your help. Jesus, I accept you into my heart, right? And at that point, they can, they can, they're, they're turning away from sin. They're turning away from these forces of darkness. Does that mean they're going to stop? No, the weapon may form, right? It may form, but it won't prosper, right? So they can fight against these forces by just admitting their guilt, right and 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 not continuing in that way of sin should we continue in sin that grace may abound of course not no um this grace is for those who believe and we need to turn away from sin we need to accept the guilt of what we have done um don't deny that um ask for forgiveness of sin repent of your sins and turn towards Christ allowing him to help you on that journey towards um, taking your authority, um, binding up these forces of darkness and rejecting the enemy and, and, and standing firm in faith. Amen. So that great grace is being poured out to you, but we're not continuing in sin. No, by no means. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for showing yourself mighty and strong. Lord God, we know that you were crucified. Lord God, you were crucified by people just like us. You were denied by people just like us. We denied you in the way that we lived before we knew you, Lord God. We love you. We say sorry for what we've done. We ask you to forgive us for our sins. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you um have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's doing, he's gonna do just that, amen. One of the um, things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you could stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, take care and be blessed. Also, don't forget to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Take care.